The situation in North Korea has been going on, as the Commission of Inquiry found, for a very long time, decades. And therefore, uh, we didn't expect that things would change overnight. We did not expect that the Commission of Inquiry would be permitted to come into North Korea. And we therefore prepared our methodology on the assumption that we would not be given access to the country. But that didn't stop us doing our job because there were 26,000 people from North Korea who had fled uh, from that country living in South Korea and many others living in other countries. So we had plenty of testimony. Uh, to what extent uh, were things different from what we expected? Well, uh, I think the value of the inquiry was that it collected a great deal of information from people who, in many cases, quite recently had been in North Korea, and they could give uh, their testimony uh, and indicate what they went through, what their experiences as human beings were and uh, they demonstrated that very serious offences to human rights had occurred and some of those were crimes against humanity which the international community has promised to react to and respond to. So uh, that is where the Commission of Inquiry uh, led us. It led us to fact-finding and to reaching conclusions uh, on a high level of uh, standard of proof and making uh, recommendations for the improvement of the human rights situation uh, in North Korea. Well, the Commission of Inquiry understood right from the start that uh, the cooperation of the People's Republic of China was really a key to getting progress uh, in respect of human rights in North Korea. Uh, that is because in part of the economic links between DPRK and China, uh, also the historical and fraternal party links between the two countries, uh, the geographical contiguity, uh, China has a border with DPRK, uh, and the large uh, Korean minority, many of them themselves descended from or uh, in person refugees from North Korea who live on the border of China. Uh, the, the situation in, uh, in respect of their, with their testimony uh, was graphic and I think the aspect of the testimony that I will never forget was the sheer uh, necessity of food in the human being. Human beings can last for so long without uh, literature, without art, uh, and without uh, the accoutrements of ordinary life, but food is absolutely essential. And in our report, uh, there is a very important chapter, uh, very well written if I can say so, explaining how the daily grind of getting food uh, is for most people in North Korea, outside the elite, uh, a continuing grave burden on the people. And we heard testimony which was extremely graphic uh, of the situation of the lack of food in the detention centres and how uh, one person who gave testimony had the job every morning of uh, sending, of leading a wheelbarrow around the encampment to pick up the emaciated bodies of the uh, people who had died overnight uh, and put them in a vat where they were burned uh, and the ashes and the body parts were then scattered on the nearby fields for um, uh, in order to uh, help grow uh, the rudimentary needs of food for the uh, detention centres. Uh, I am of such an age that I remember seeing vivid images of emaciated bodies at the end of the Second World War when uh, the Allied soldiers opened up parts of the Nazi-occupied Germany. Uh, and sitting there listening to this testimony, 
brought home to me that here was I, uh, decades later, listening to testimony of a somewhat similar kind. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, that was the most vivid testimony that I heard. Uh, and the testimony of women and the suffering they had undergone, the testimony of disadvantaged groups of disabled people, the testimony of people who could not practice their religion without very grave punishments. Uh, all of this was horrific in this day and age that this goes on and in a country which is a member of the United Nations uh, and has signed up to the United Nations treaties. So there is a job to be done here and it's the obligation of the whole world to make sure that those who are responsible for the crimes against humanity are rendered accountable before the bar of humanity for their crimes. The forms of torture that were inflicted uh, on people in the detention camps in North Korea, uh, they were all horrible. The motorbike torture, the air airline torture, but the most horrible of all was the pigeon torture when people were manacled and held above the floor uh, so that they couldn't stand, they couldn't rest, they couldn't sleep, uh, they vomited, they defecated, uh, and uh, they didn't want to continue to live. We recommended that the matter should be referred by the Security Council to the International Criminal Court, where there is a prosecutor who could have a, a access to the material of the Commission of Inquiry and that prosecutor's own investigations. And that was the correct way to go about it. Uh, this is yet, uh, yet another instance of the fact that the Commission of Inquiry on North Korea acted with great propriety and care. We were prudent and we were careful and we thought that the step of launching a prosecution was a step that should be taken by a prosecutor, not by the Commission of Inquiry. Our job was to find facts and that is what we did and all that we did. Make sure that the world hears your voices. The voices of the people of North Korea cannot be heard. They cannot have access to the internet. They cannot speak to us. But we can speak out for them and to them. And it's important that the United Nations should make our voices heard in North Korea. And that is an important message that we should bring. Civil society should bring it. And they should remember the motto, Never give up, never give up, never give up. That is the motto that they should accept for the voices of North Korea and they should become the voice of North Korea today, tomorrow and until the human rights situation in North Korea is radically changed for the better. So I've completed my duties in respect of North Korea, but your duties continue. Your duties involved, involve lifting your voices, not being satisfied with inaction on the report. Getting a report is a good thing. It's put this matter on the agenda of the international community, but a report of itself doesn't change things in North Korea. It's important that the change agents should be you. The change agents within North Korea uh, are difficult to organize because of the totalitarian uh, regime that exists there. And therefore they need friends. They need friends outside North Korea. They need people who will lift their voices and pursue their actions peacefully in order to promote the changes that the Commission of Inquiry recommended. And so my uh, recommendation, my words to those in HRNK would be, stay the course, continue your efforts, never give up uh, in your efforts to bring human rights to North Korea, and be absolutely sure that in the end, human rights will come to North Korea. 
We humans are genetically programmed to search for rationality and to love one another. And because of that fact, we will ultimately see an end to the oppression of human rights in North Korea. And when that happens, HRNK will have an honoured place in those who have worked for human rights for the people of North Korea.